In this video, I'm going to show you how to find a product to sell on Amazon in any marketplace in just two minutes. That's right. Two minutes is all it takes using this technique. Hello everyone, it's Sajad, Stealth Amazon FBA. I hope you're doing well. We're gonna get onto the computer in just a minute, but first of all, I wanted to thank you, everybody who's watching today and all of my subscribers. We've just gotten over the 1,000 subscriber mark. And as a massive thank you, what I'm offering with this video is one free mentorship program with us. That will include a full training program with our mentorship support completely for free. If you're interested in this, please comment below Helium 10 product research as we're going to be using Helium 10 today in this particular video. And what I'll do in the next video is I will randomly select one winner and that winner will again for completely free get mentorship and training from us. So without further ado, let's get started. So step number one, I'm here on Helium 10. Now, if you've not downloaded this software, it is the best for Amazon sellers. And it is great value for money when you consider the fact that it doesn't only help you with product research, but it helps you when it comes to creating your listing, running Amazon PPC, follow up emails, etc. So it is very, very useful. If you're interested, first link in the description below. If you use my affiliate codes, you will get 50% off the first month or even further discounts as well. And if you use my affiliate code below, you will get a massive discount on the product research software. So I'm here on Helium 10 at the moment. And if you just move to the left, you'll see there's an option called black box. Amazon product research. That's the one you want to click on. Now, the problem is most people, what they do is they just type in revenue figures, review count, and they click on search. And the risk with this is everybody else is doing the exact same thing. Now, I'm saying product research, you can find a new idea for a product in under two minutes. But most people on YouTube will tell you that Amazon product research is the hardest part. Now, you need to actually be very clear on that. It's not finding an idea which is difficult. That takes seconds. It's actually appraising that idea which takes longer. And I'll show you how to do that in just a minute as well. But what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a few advanced techniques you can use in this video. And I'll do another video where I use brand analytics to come up with product ideas as well. Not a lot of people know how to do that. But anyway, in this video, keywords. What we're going to do, instead of looking for products by revenue alone, we're going to look via search volume. Now, if you're here on Amazon.com, what most people do, most customers, is they will always put in some sort of keywords at the top first to search for a product. Now, as Amazon sellers, what we're doing is we're reverse engineering. We're looking for products that are already doing really well, and we're reverse engineering and selling similar products. Nothing wrong with that. However, you're missing a massive a region of the marketplace. So if I can give you an idea, let's say this is the entire Amazon marketplace. These are all of the products selling, let's say for this example on amazon.com. So you've got here literally millions of products. Now, the problem is when you're looking for product research ideas, your ideas could be here anywhere in this particular box. So what I've done here is I've randomly dotted this box of products and let's see it say these are gold nugget products. Now, this is the issue. When you're using product research software and you just look for high revenue products, so those selling 10,000 or more per month, let's say in revenue, which is fantastic, and uh, only those products that have less than say 10 reviews, you're in this box here. And the problem is all the Amazon sellers are looking in this box, especially new beginners. So what happens is you end up finding products other people have found as well. and. The, I wouldn't say the niche necessarily becomes saturated, but the supply and demand dynamics are not great. Whereas I'm looking for products here and here where there's no other sellers looking. And there are a few different techniques I use to do that. And I'm going to share obviously one in this video, but I'll share other ones in future upcoming videos as well. So don't forget to subscribe, turn on the notification bell. That way you get notified of all new videos. And I will be sharing on this channel content for beginners, but also content for advanced sellers as well, because if you're looking to scale your business quickly, these are the techniques you're, you are looking to ideally use. And one of them is the keyword technique where you might be able to find these other areas of the marketplace. So finding an idea doesn't take long. So we can just pull out an idea here. That's great. We've got a product idea. It's appraising it that takes longer. That's why people say Amazon product research is the most important part, but not finding a product, appraising a product. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's use an example. So in this keyword uh, technique, what we do is we put in a search volume. Let's say we want to search for products that have a minimum search volume of, let's say 4,000 per month. That means 
there are at least 4,000 searches for these particular keywords every single month. Then what we can do is we can put monthly revenue, but we only want to go after the products that have a certain amount of revenue. But actually for this example, I'm going to leave that blank for now. I'm going to leave the revenue blank, the price blank, re review count blank. And the reason I'm doing that is again, if we get on to here, I don't want to kind of over analyze or over filter or over sift if that makes sense because then I'll end up in this box where everybody else is looking. I don't want to do that. I want to put as broad a search as possible and come up with random ideas, products you've never even perhaps heard of. Now you might be thinking I've already got an idea Sajad, pretty convinced it's going to work. Well, I'm here to tell you that your idea is probably not the one to go for because very likely everybody else has thought of similar ideas as well. So let's run this search. So minimum 4,000, nothing else selected at all. Let's click on search. So now Helium 10 will give you lots and lots of random products. And you can see here, they have all types of revenue, 15,000, 100,000, etc. You've got the search volume, an idea, an estimate of search volume here, 12,000, 13,000 searches per month. And you've got review count, which is excellent. Now you might be thinking, well, these reviews are too much Sajad for me. I, I can't compete with somebody who has an uh, average of 2,000 reviews in a niche. But ignore that for now because this is not where you're doing an appraisal. This is where you're just thinking of ideas. Did you think of dash cam mirror as an idea for a product? What about sweatbands for women? Is that something that you had originally thought of? That's what I mean. Like these are random product ideas. But again, we're just looking for the keywords here. What we then do is the most important part of product research. This is the stuff that takes seconds. Like I said, under two minutes, I've already come up with a few fantastic ideas, but I'm going to appraise it now in front of you to show you what I actually think about when I'm looking through a niche. So let's pick one at random. In fact, let's go for sweatbands for women. Click on the three dots on the side and just click on view on Amazon. Now this is the niche. Again, it's a simple product, a very lightweight product. So already it ticks a few boxes there because it'd be very easy to kind of airship this to an Amazon fulfillment center or to your home address, etc. So that's fantastic. Price point is a little bit on the cheap side. Again, this is all part of appraisal. I don't want to get involved in niches where we're selling for five or $6. I need, it needs to be at least $10 mark, preferably $20 and above. Because that way when I'm running PPC and there are other costs obviously involved in this business, I have the best kind of profit margins. I want to be aiming for at least 30 to 40% profit margin per item. So I can see here that although there are some cheaper products, there are also products that are selling for $22. There are people who are bundling. Next thing I want to look at here, so I've got a vague idea, but this is where we run our Chrome extension. Again, you can use Helium 10 for this. So click on X-Ray Amazon Product Research. You can download this Chrome extension just from Google if you're using Google uh, Chrome. You get some ideas at the top, some averages, but I always ignore all of this stuff because it doesn't matter. I want to reverse engineer products that are all already doing well. And this part of the appraisal process, as I said, is manual and it takes the longest time. But we've got our idea now, so sweatbands for women. What can we do with this? Well, scrolling down, we know it's a light product. We can see most people are selling it as FBA. So that's a tick there. We don't want to see many people selling it as FBM or Amazon because perhaps it's a very, very heavy product and that's why people are just shipping it order by order and not sending it to the fulfillment center. Or there may be an issue with this product, it's restricted, so Amazon don't want to hold it in their fulfillment centers, etc., etc. If you have any questions on that, by the way, just comment below. But we're seeing FBA, so that's another tick there, part of the appraisal process. And we've got an idea of FBA fees and we can see revenue. Now, what I'm noticing here as we scroll further down is the revenue is still good when you're looking at the kind of second and third pages potentially. However, the re review count is on the high side. That doesn't mean it's impossible to sell in this niche because you'll still see sellers here with just, let's say this one with 95 reviews that are making 2000 in revenue. Overall, however, I would say this is too competitive because I'm looking at the ratio of revenue to reviews, if that makes sense, because it takes a bit of work to get to the 100 review level. However, it's also important to note that once you get to those levels in this type of niche, whether you've got a thousand reviews or 2000 reviews or 5000, it doesn't really matter. They're all kind of the same as long as you've got enough social proof, if that makes sense. The other problem though is not the reviews people think about in this niche. It's let's say, for example, we've got this product here that has 28,000 reviews. The problem with this product is because it's so well ranked on Amazon for so many keywords, Amazon put it all over the place when people are searching, not only for sweatbands for women, but any kind of related search. So you've got a lot of competition against these high review products already, if that makes sense. So this is what would turn me off. 
But the other things to think about is seasonality, for example, and I'll show you an example of that in just a minute. Let's go back to the keyword research. So I put the search volume there as 4,000, but let's just increase that to 10,000 and let's see what happens when we put minimum uh, monthly revenues. So let's just say 5,000 there and let's put review count of maximum 50. So it's, it's more products. We're, we're kind of niching down a little bit now and targeting a little bit more, but I want to just see stuff that might be doing well at the moment, newly trending, etc. So click on search again. Now this is interesting. Notice immediately Easter decorations, Easter decorations clearance. St. Patrick's Day wreath, St. Patrick's Day beads. So let me ask you a question. If you're completely new to this, what do you think about those products? What do you think about these? So if you look at this, you'll see that Easter decorations are doing very well. Massive search volume, 600,000 in terms of search. Monthly revenue averages, maybe 15,000. There may be listings that are doing hundreds of thousands. What do you think about this product? And what do you think about St. Paddy's Day beads, for example? What do you think about that? Well, those of you who have a little bit more experience will know immediately that these are seasonal products. So what that means is these will sell well a particular time of year, obviously Easter, but nobody's going to be searching for Easter decorations in summer or near Christmas, if that makes sense. Maybe you'll still make a few sales if you have some sort of decoration that people can use any time of year. That's fine. Then go after that particular product but do not go after seasonal products if you're brand new when it comes to selling on Amazon because you will never be able to time this perfectly. I can do that now. I can I launch Christmas products every single year, but I wouldn't go anywhere near Easter products or sometimes early January products because I don't have that much experience with those in terms of timing. With the Christmas products, I know exactly when I need to get them in stock for. And that's what you need to know beforehand. And remember, if your supplier delays things by a week or two here and there, pretty much screwed and all of your money is tied up with that inventory. So avoid seasonal products altogether. Now, how do you know if they're seasonal? Well, usually it's obvious from the name anyway, but if you're not 100% sure, a little trick, there's a few ways to do this, but one way is to check Google Trends. So this is it here, trends.google.com. Just type in Google Trends on, uh, on Google and let's say it was St. Patrick's Day something. So we saw St. Patrick's Day beads earlier. And then let's uh, stick to US and let's go last I don't know, five years. Look at that, very, very clear. Clear spikes at certain times of the year and then nothing for the rest of the year. And then it spikes again and then nothing and so on and so forth. So I hope that's crystal clear. You want to stay away from that because if you time it wrong, you're not going to make any sales. You might get stock just after St. Paddy's Day, for example. So I'll leave it there for now, but as I say, I'll be doing some more advanced tutorials, especially using things like brand analytics to come up with product ideas. If you have any questions about this at all, please comment below. And also our comprehensive training program is the second link in the description below if you're interested. We are running a promotion at the moment so you can use the coupon code which is also below in the description to get an extra discount. So that's it. Thanks very much for listening and I'll see you all again very soon.